Hi all, in this video we're going to learn about functions. So what does that mean by function in C++? Basically it refers to, to a function, um, a purpose, a purpose of the particular code segment of the code. It is not whole coding, but just a part. If you can separate part of your code and then put it into a function, and then you can code it anytime when you want to use it. So when we want to use it, if you plan to separate your code for easy management, code management, then you have to create functions. And why? As I said just now, for micromanagement, easy to manage the code. Let's say if you have a program that consists of 2,000 lines of code, and then basically the particular code is called, the, the particular code is called, is almost complete or um, is completed. And then when you want to improve it or further enhance it, it will take time for you to fully understand the code. Um, so the best way is we separate them into functions so that we know clearly this particular function um, for what purpose. Okay, This particular section of code, what is the uh, purpose? And then in some of the cases, we can reuse the code. We don't have to recreate the code, but we can save it some way, either in the same file or in a different file, then we can code them. And the syntax is not very complicated. The first one is started with data types. So what is the data type that you want to return to the main functions? And function name and variables. So these variables depends on what are the variables that you want to pass in the particular functions. All right. Um, then the function name, as usual, is similar to variable declarations. We must have the four rules in order to have a good name for the function. So you also know when you refer back to the code, you will know that, oh, this is the functions and this is the purpose. And when we want to call it, yeah, we should refer to the name and then the variables. So let's go, um, oh yeah, the data type for the return and then give a suitable name and the variables you want to pass. Okay, for an example of part one, we are talking about no parameter passing and no return values. So how are we going to do that? Inside the, uh, after the header file, we should declare the function itself. So if there is no parameter passing to the function and there is no return to the value, then we put void and void. Void in this case means null, means nothing. We do not have um, anything to pass. And then in the main program, we have to call it. So what is it? What does it mean by, by no parameter passing and no return value? Meaning that the particular functions can do everything itself. And you don't have to pass any variables and that it will not return anything to the main functions for other purpose. So in, in here, um, basically, we have to declare it and then the function can be um, in this type, display the statements. Okay, okay. if you're not very clear, let's look at the first example we have. We are going to create a program uh, for display the message. Hi all, let's learn programming principles and then display the second message. Display the third message. We will get the input from the user and then we will display the uh, message again for its output. So how are we going to create the functions for it? Um, yeah, we will discuss in the coding part. Let's do it together. In this code, I have created string students underscore name, and then we have C out, C out second message, and then we have requested the user to enter the name. We see in the student's name or the username, and then we will see out. So the output will be like this. Hi all, let's learn programming principles and it shows. And then this is lecture five functions. And then please enter your name Let's say I put Muhammad Mo. Ahmed. Yeah. So the output will be Hi, Muhammad. Welcome to the programming principles classes. That's the output. We can see this is the usual uh, program that we created since the last few weeks. Okay. And now we are going to create a function. So what I'm going to show you is I want to move the whole code, the whole code into one function. So I remove it, I put it somewhere here, I declare it, void, and then the function name. We always start with f-u-n-c to represent the function with its name. So it's up to you what name you want, I put a, and then void. Okay, don't forget about the bracket. Okay, and then I paste my code here. I paste all of my previous code into this function. So what will be happen now if I compile and run, there is nothing happens. You just say um, no error and then it will run. Okay, because the computer, the, the compiler does not know when to call it. 
I have defined it. I have defined it, but the computer, the compiler do not know uh, whether I have called it. So if I want to call it, it's simple. This is the name of the function, right? So usually we will just copy and paste it here, but we remove the words void. We remove the words void. So don't forget about the semicolon. And then we save and we compile again. You will found that it works fine. It works fine just as uh, what I did just now. Okay, it will show, um, hi, Muhammad, welcome. So this is what we call as a function as a function. If you have completed certain code, you don't want to um, disturb or you want to avoid some error on that code, the best way is to hide it. The best way is to hide it using these small buttons. Okay, now in your main function, we only have to call one line to call these codes. So what you should do, what should you do is you have to, you have to ma make sure that, uh, what should you do is you have to make sure all of the codes over here will not get anything from the main function and will not pass anything to the main function. This is what we call no parameter passing, no return value. I hope this is clear. So of course, we also can divide into two functions. Let's say my first function, first part, only consists of these two codes. And then the second part consists of these codes. So what should I do? I have to declare another function void function a a uh, function b sorry now i have declared function b and i can remove all of this code and put it here but you will found that compiler has highlighted this student underscore name it does not know where is this students underscore name because it is here it is in this function so we have to remove from function a and then we include it into function b so now we have function A to display this message, function B to display this message and get the inputs. So I don't change this part in the main program. I just uh, maintain function A. So let's see what will happen. If I compile and run, you will found that it only display this part. Hi all, let's learn programming. And then this is lecture five. It happened just because in our main function, we call function A. And now let's try to call function B. Compile and run again. You will found that it works fine. Okay, hi Ali, welcome to the programming principles classes. Okay, so I repeat, you have to make sure if you put void and void, meaning that there is no parameter passing from your main function to the function itself. So you have to imagine main function is the main box or is a main room. And then when you create a small function, it is a small room or small box. So when you have something you want the small box to do, you have to make sure they can do everything inside. And then they will display everything. They will process everything. If you have a formula, you can process the particular formula. So this is how we use void and void. No parameter passing around, no return to the main function. I hope this example is clear. We go for the next example. Next example, um, thanks to w3resource.com, I got the example from this uh, website. We will request for two inputs, first number, and then we will get the second number. After that, we will have a formula to sum the numbers and display the outputs. Let's see the code. This is the code. We have integer for number one, number two, and sum. So we will see out sum of two numbers as display message. And then we have input first number, input second number. We will sum it and then we will see out the results. So in such a case, we can compile and run first to see the output. Sum of two numbers, 25, 37. So, so the sum of the number is 62. This will be displayed in our output. <coughs> So what I'm going to do is, since this is the message, I will group these two lines into one function. I will group this and put it here, void, 
and then function a so it's up to you eh, to give a good name for the function and then don't uh, don't forget about the bracket so i paste the function i paste the code sorry i paste the code now this part should work well so let's try copy and put it here i remove the word void don't forget the semicolon and now let's compile and run to check whether the code um, is correct or not 25 36 sorry 36 61 so this is correct i think it's wrong so how about second part second part input first number input second number and then we have the formula and then we will display so for this part we also can combine them into one function void function maybe we name it calculate and then void bracket I paste the codes here so before I compile we found that it's such a the the num1 num2 and sum are not defined because we define in the main program in the main program in this part line 18 until 26 so we have to copy uh, we have to cut it and put it in this uh, function call function calculate sorry so what will happen now if I want to call this function, I only have to copy and paste here and remove the word void. Right. And compile run. You found that it works normal. Okay, 36, 35, 61. So this is how we create functions. I hope this is clear. So from this um, exercise, we found that these variables these variables must follow the C in, C in, and here. Why? Again, if you remove this part, the declaration of the variables, if you found that the compiler highlighted, it. it does not understand. It does not understand what is num1, what is num2, what is sum in this function, in here, this function. So you have to assume that if this is a room call fun uh, function calculate, and we have three variables, means that we have three persons inside. But the compiler must know who are these three persons. We must tell the compiler, oh, these are the three persons. Okay, these are the three variables. Or else it will not know what is num1, what is num2, what is sum. And these variables inside these functions, we call it as local variable. Local variable. So I hope um, this is clear. Let's compile and run. Oops, sorry. Let's compile and run. Okay, 61. So why we use void and void? Again, this part consists of a full process. We get the inputs, we apply the formula, and then we show the results. So you may ask, can we can we show the results in the main function like this? where this particular function is get the inputs and then do the calculations and then in my main part i display okay the answer is can if you modify it if you pass the variables okay we will learn it in the um, next video or next slide okay now we are going to learn about parameter passing but Okay, now we are going to learn about parameter passing, but there is no return value. Meaning that one function will receive a variable, a parameter from the main function, and then it will do the job. For an example, you have a big room, big room having a lot of staff, and then you stay in the manager room. So your staff will do the minor process, and then document will pass to you. After you receive the document, this is what we call parameter passing. The staff pass the document to you. After you have received it, you are the one who check everything. And then you do the calculations, whatever, come up with the results. And then you sign and job, done. That's all. So which, this is what we mean by no return value. And then you keep it. Okay. So from here, if you want to do parameter passing, then you have to declare some parameters. What do you want to pass to that particular function? And um, this is the example. If you want to pass an integer tree, well, in your main function, you have to pass the variable three, the variable, the value. Okay, and when you declare the function, you have to declare the particular variable. What is the variable that you want to pass to the particular 
uh, function. Okay, let's try for the coding part. And again, uh, we we will look for this example again. Example here, um, we are going to pass this line, the last line, into one function. And this Ali, we will capture it from the main program. And then we will pass it into a function so that the functions can display this message. So let's try it. All right, here is the code. I want to remove this part and then put it into a function. So you will found that from here, we declare the string, a student's name, sorry, and then um, see out the messages, see out, please enter your name, see in the student's name. And then we will pass it to one function. This function, maybe I call it function student name. And what about here in the middle part, in this parenthesis? We want to pass the string student's name. So we have to type string student name. And the computer will know that the compiler will know that, okay, my my function is having one parameter. This parameter is referred to um, string data type and the name is student underscore name. Then I can paste the code here. Paste the code here. So since you want to use this variable student underscore name, and in our see out this message, we have to make sure they are same. Then we can use it. So how about in the main program? In the main program, we will capture the student's name and then we will store it here. But we have to pass it to the function, so we have to call the function. We have to call the function. Function, student's name, semicolon, and this data type, remove it. And now it should work. Okay, compile and run. Please enter your name. Ali. Okay, hi Ali, welcome to the programming class. You see? This will work. So what will be happen is we capture, we declare the string underscore name, we capture it, and then we pass it here. So this is parameter passed to the function called fun function student's name. So the, the compiler will refer to this function, and then it will know that oh, you are going to pass a string, and the string name is student underscore name. So I can call for students underscore name. I hope this example is clear. And in some of the textbook, you will found that um, they use different variables in the main and its function. Um, yeah, but when they pass it, it still works because parameter passing. Let's say over here, st string student's name. I change in my main function as student1. So please enter your name. I change it to student1. And when I pass to the function, I will pass student's1. Because this student one is the local variable that I have declared under my main function. So nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. But when it pass here, okay, it will call for this function. And now the student one will be renamed to student underscore name. We declare in this function so that the student underscore name can be used here in this function. Um, if it is confusing, if I have confused you, you can think in such a way. In the main program, you represent this is university. In the university, we will call your full name. Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Adam. This is your full name. Because I, when I call you, I refer to your name list. But your, your roommate will call you differently. Let's say this is the function of your roommate. When you go back to your, room, uh, to your hostel, your roommate will call you, call you Ali. Hey Ali, Ali, Ali. You will know that you are Ali. Okay, you are Ali. So same case over here. I can change it. This is Ali. Sorry. And then this is Ali. When I compile and run, it knows that, oh, Ali is here. Ali is here. Okay, but in the university, I will call your name. Students1, students1, students1. So this is how um, it works, basically, about the local variable. So this variable, Ali, will work in this function. This local variable, students1, will work in the main function. But when we pass when we pass this parameter in this function, then this function will know who is student one, which is means Ali. Okay. In another way, you may say that at home, if you go back to your home, your mom will call you Adek. Adek, because you are the youngest brother probably. Adek. If you are the eldest one, we call you Aka, Abang. Isn't it? But then that is your name at your home. In university, if I call Abang, oh, so many Abang. So I will call your name. 
Okay, so this has happened um, in the compiler. I hope this is clear. Now let's try for um, example two. Actually, we modified again based on um, the requirements of these functions. We will try to call two variables from the main function, and then um, the sub function we do the task to sum the numbers, and then we display the result. So let's try it. In the... Okay, now we have this part we want to maintain in um, the main main program and then we will create a function to calculate the sum and then display the result so what should we do is we remove the formula we remove the c out and then i create a function again start with void first um, and then the name of the function function underscore calculate it is my um, name of the function so now about the variable how many variables you have to identify how many variables you want to pass to this function and what are they and what are they so before i forget okay so now if you refer to the main program we will capture num1 we will capture num2 and then we will pass to this function so we will have num1 we will have num2 so what is the data type for num1 refer back to the main function it is integer it is integer for both variables now done so how about the rest of the two lines of the codes just paste it here just paste it num1 num2 but after you paste it you found that some some having error why because the computer does not identify this variable so what should you do is over here we declare in sum so now if you have these codes and it shows no error then when you compile it should work but but it is not 100 percent working okay why we will have sum of two numbers from here this is the code sum of two numbers this line input first number 14 i put 14 is stored in num1 input second number i put 25 and when i enter you will found that nothing happened it stored it, the compiler stored it, and nothing happened. It just jumped to C out and line. So why? Because we still haven't called this particular function. So in order to make sure it works, copy this function and then put it here. So now we have in num1, in num2. Remove the data type and follow with a comma. Oh, sorry, semicolon. So now compile and run again. It should work. And you can try it works just fine so next questions maybe you will ask or maybe you will feel curious that how many variables that we can pass to a function it's up to you it's up to you as long as it is not too much then it's okay as long as it fulfill the function's purpose then fine it is just fine okay i hope this is clear and the second thing is about the variables again variable declarations just now i have shown you uh, we can rename the variables because this is what we call as local variables so in this function if you don't want to use num1 and num2 because it confuses you then you can rename it to something else x and y but this is local variables for this function you have to make sure it is used in this function as well okay now if you compile and run it should give you no error So I hope this is clear for you. Let's go for the third part of this chapter. We have parameter passing with a return to value. In some of the cases, we might need to pass a variable from our main program to a function. And then the function will do all of the process calculations or whatever, and the results will be returned to the main program. So this is what we call as parameter passing. When we pass the parameter from one function to one function, we call parameter passing. After the function completed the process, we will return the value to the main program we call it returned process when we declare it we have to make sure um, we know what is the return data type what is the return data type and every time when a function returns a value it only can return one value we cannot return more than one value you must remember the fact okay and of course <clears throat> you can get um, as many number of uh, possible for the parameters and then do the formulas apply the formulas and then return return one variable please remember that so let's go for uh, example five in this round 
what are we going to do? We will put all of these three codes in one function. So the function will capture the name and then the particular name, we will pass it back to the main function. The main function will declare, oh sorry, the main functions will display the results. So let's see how it works. Okay, back to the code. We have this already declare. I move everything into one function first. But um, yeah, I just declare any function. Yeah? Function A and then this one. Okay, let's say this is my function. This is my function, function A. I don't compile it because confirm it works. Um, it's void and void process. But now what I'm going to do is this part, this part, I'm going to remove it so that I can return it. Okay, put it here. Put it here. Yep. But now if I compile and run, what will be happen is the compiler will refer to this function A. It will read this variable. It will show all of this. It capture and then it will stop. It does not know what to do next, isn't it? After it stop, it will go to this line 18. 18, we have C out, hi, and student's name. The issue now is this student's name. What is this student's name about? You will found that um, it's highlighted student name is undefined. Student name is undefined because we don't want to call the student's name. Actually, we want to call the function itself to return um, the variables. So what should we do over here? We can put returned. What are we going to return? The student name. So we copy and paste here, return the student's name. So from here, you will found that the returns, high, uh, after the returns, the student's name is highlighted. Um, it does not match the function type. Why? Because we want to return a string. Student's name has been declared as a string. So in our function A, we have to put string. String function A. Uh, now the compiler understand. Okay, you're going to return the student's name. Where is the student's name? It's captured from the C in. Then it will return to the main program. But when you check the main program, it still say that the student's name is not defined. The student's name is not defined because the student's name will be passed via function A. So we copy and paste it here, function A. So in such a case, in this example, we do not capture anything. We do not capture anything because it is not necessary. It is not necessary to capture. But in the function itself, it will capture and then it will pass and return the student's name to the main function, to the main function. So we try and compile run, see whether it works or not. Okay. Um, Jasper. Okay. When we enter Jasper, it will show hi Jasper, welcome to the programming class. So this is how it works. It will return the student's name and this is the data types. So it will show it here. So I hope um, you understand how it works. Let's go for a second example. Okay, in this example, we are going to capture again, same number, number one, number two, and then we will sum the number and pass the results. But we modify a little bit where our code, num1, num2, and the results will be maintained in the main function while the sum, the formula itself, we will put it into um, a function called uh, uh, calculate, calculator or calculate. Let's try how to call it. Okay, let's back to the code. As I have mentioned, this formula, we are going to remove it and then put it under one function. If you do not know how to define the particular bug functions, please start with void first. Void, function name, um, function calculate, and then put void. Now put your formula. After you have insert your formula from the main function, you will found that the formula does not understand about num1 and num2. Why? Double check your code from the main function because you are going to pass the two variables to the formula. Isn't it? So what should you do is this one, copy and paste here, the function calculator, put a semicolon, and this is not void anymore. We want to pass num1 and num2 to the function. So copy num1, put it here, and then copy num2, put it here. So we have num1, num2 in this function, copy and paste, replace with the void. So now tell yourself or ask yourself, what is this num1, num2? Num1, num2 is integer. It's 
integer. Both of them are integers. So how about the sum? How about the sum? Okay, in this case, I don't want to um, confuse you. So we have to declare the sum as integer in this function so that it knows that, okay, this sum is referred to integer. And then we are going to return the sum to the main function. This is a purpose, isn't it? We returned the sum. And we found that the compiler has highlighted sum. Now it is highlighted sum not because of variable declarations, because you have the return. You want to return the sum. Then you have to replace this part data type to integer. Because this is integer. So you want to return integer. And if your formula, with, uh, after apply the formula, it will return double or maybe float. Yeah, you can just put double or float. It's okay. Okay, it depends on what you want to return. So now, so now we have this. This is the function we are going to um, return to the main program. Uh, to ease your understanding, you put a sum here, equal to. So now, the function will return, um, after it calculates, it will return the sum into here, and then it will display here. Of course, there is other way, which is shortened, but um, this is the first time you, you learn about uh, function and return. Um, the best, this is the best way. Okay, this is the best way to understand how to return the variables. So now let's try and compile. 14, 25, you will get 39. So in this example, I've shown you, we pass two variables, which is in one, in num1, integer num2, to this function. And then when we pass it back to the main program, we can use the returns, returns sum. So in this example, we also can simplify it. We also can simplify it. Um, I'm not sure whether this is available in some of the textbook or examples. Um, you can find it anyway. So the first thing is we get this num1 and num2. Okay. And we are going to return um, the, the, uh, the, the sum of these two net variables. So basically, we don't have to create the sum over here. We can directly return them. We can directly return num1 and num2 into um, the main program. <clears throat> okay, this will work as well. And over here, we can try to compile and run. Okay, 14, 25. Oh, sorry, 2. So it will still give you the correct answer. So this is how it works. We pass the variables, we capture it, and then we do we apply some formulas and then we return the results. So this is the result. Okay. So if your function is not very complicated, um, you may just return in such a way. Okay. And then in the main program as well, we can simplify it. We remove the sum. And we remove the sum. We remove the sum. But this part will represent, this, this is where we will get the sum value from the function itself. So we can cut it. And then we can put it here. We remove the semicolons. So to tell the compiler that this will return a variables, and then we can display the variables. So let's save it, compile and run. You will still get something same. Okay, it still works well. All right, so um, depends on how you code it. Well, it will work eh? in both ways. Okay, so I hope um, throughout this example, you have at least understand what does it mean by parameter passing? What does it mean by a returns value? Okay, guys, um, before we go for the next uh, part of this chapter, I would like to show you for this example where we can create many functions sometimes and then we can call one function pass the variable to another function and that particular variable will be used in that particular function and pass it back to the main program so we can go pass pass all of the parameters from one function to another function so, um, so what i did in this example <clears throat> i move the first sections of input first number into one function called function capture a but in this function um, I don't have any, any parameter passed to these functions, where this function will capture the input. Then this function will return the value, the num1, which is the first input value, into somewhere else, into other function. Same case happened for function capture um, for the second value, second number. I call it as function cap b. So no parameter passing. I capture the variable, and then I store it in the num2. I pass it back to the main function or to another function. And then I maintain the calculation function. We will read two integers. We will sum them <clears throat> and then pass it back. Okay, or return it back. So in the main function, <clears throat> in the main function, I will display the two messages. And over here, line 26, 
I will call for calculate function. So as we know, calculate function will require two inputs, which is num1 and num2. So now my num1 and num2 come from function cap A, function cap B. After the function cap A and cap B capture the values, it will pass the particular values here, pass the particular values here, so that my function calculations can uh, function calculations can can calculate and return the value to the main functions. Okay, so it is possible. Huh? It depends on how you want to arrange the function, but sometimes don't make yourself to uh, for so complicated. We will create one function to capture all of the possible variables, and then we will store it somewhere. For formula parts, yeah, we cannot avoid that, so we can create some files to store the functions separately, or we may create some separate functions so we can call them anytime we want. And then we will have um, one function to display all of the outputs to ease um, the process of the coding. All right. Okay, guys, um, in these sections or in this part, we will talk about the references parameter. So what does that mean is sometimes we want to update a variable in our main program or maybe in a sub program. Okay, so maybe in that situations where your variable x over here, just an example, we have an integer x equal to 3. And this variable, we will pass it to other functions. I don't care how many functions you have. And from that particular functions, we will update the variables instead of passing back to the main program. So we will update in function a, update in function b, and then update again in function c. Then we will pass it back to function, uh, main functions. Or maybe it's displayed in other functions. So when these complex, complex situations happens, we will use um, something called references parameters to solve the problems. Okay, otherwise, otherwise the value will be um, maintained, no change. Even though in these functions, it should be updated, but when it passes back to the main function, the value is not updated. So let's try for the coding part. All right, I have prepared this coding for you. We have a function called function A. We will receive an integer from the main program, which is x. And in our function a, we have declared integer b equal to 4. This is local variable. So what will be happen is the x value will be multiplied with the b value and the x value itself. And the x value should be returned to the main function so that the, we can display the x value. But in such a case, if you compile and run, we will not get the results. Okay. In the main function, we have integer x equal to 3. We pass 3 inside the functions. So 3 multiplied with 4, the x should be 12 when we return to the main program. So we compile and run. Let's see. The answer is 3 because the x value is not updated. Okay. In order to solve it, we have two ways to solve it. One is we have a return, return an x value. This value is referred to the x value here, or you just copy and paste the formula and then pass it here. So we are going to return an integer. We change the data type void to int, and then this function ax, we return um, as x, x equal to function a. And then we save it, we compile and run. So now the x value will be updated. Okay, this is um, one way of solving this problem. But if sometimes, if you don't want to do this, okay, you go back to the original coding. This is the original coding. So how are we going to solve this? We want to update. We want to make sure that the x value in our main function is updated. And we don't want to have so many complicated situations where we return here, return there, pass it here, pass it there. One way to solve it, which is use n%. Percent. This n percent is references parameter. Okay, so now let's try whether it works or not. Mm, compile and run. Okay, it shows twelve. So we have to tell the compilers that in this function, this x value come from the main program. So in my function itself, after I have updated the x value, please update in the main program as well so that this x value is updated this is what we call as um, references parameter we hey guys in these um, sections we're going to discuss about something called global variable declaration 
So we've referred to this example that I have shown you in the previous sections of the video where we have function A. The function A is to capture the input value for first number and then we return to the main program. Function B is to capture the second number and then we return to the program. And next, in the main program, we will call for function calculations. Calculations, we read two integers passed from function A and function B, which is here, and then it will calculate the sum and returns the value to the main function. Right, and throughout the process, we found that um, we have declared integer num1, integer num2, and then we have um, declared again integer num1 and num2. So basically, um, there is one, one way to solve all of this, but this is not um, encouraged. We do not encourage programmers to use global variable declarations because even though it works very well, sometimes it may confuse us. When we have a very complicated program, the global variable declarations may confuse us because once we have declared it globally, we can use it anywhere in our program where we do not have to declare them anymore in any function and then we do not need to return them. For an example of this one, function A. So what should I do now is I cut and put it outside of function A and main. I just put it um, below the line of a comment, this comment is like this in num1. So after I have declared it globally, basically I can call it and I don't have to return it. It will be stored in here. So I don't need to return it. I put white. Okay, function A, white A. Same case to function B. I just move it here, integer num B. Okay, and then I don't return it. I change the integer to white. And then here, I don't have to call them in the function of calculations. I just put void. And then it will use num1, num2. So I only declare here as global variable declarations outside of all functions in main program. Then I can call them. All right, so function A, too many arguments in function A. <clears throat> so basically, I also don't have to call for these uh, calculations because it is not necessary. This is void. My num1 will be captured by function A and then it will be stored here. My num2 will be captured using function B and stored in num2, which is here. Okay, after we have declared function A, function B and calculations, then we have to call for function A, function B. So function A, we capture the value, function B, we capture the value, and then function C, uh, sorry, function calculate, will do the job. Let's see. Input first number, 14, 25. So it will pass the value, uh, variables to the functions, and then it will do the job. Okay, this version makes, um, makes it easy in declaring all of the variables and so on, but it is not encouraged. It is not encouraged, okay? I hope uh, this is clear. The next thing I want to share is about <coughs> function declarations. So some of the textbook um, does not show the function declarations in this part. They will move these functions and then they will put it after the main function. After the main function. So same case, you just copy and put it here. Okay, nothing is wrong, but when you compile and run this, you will find that there is an error. There are errors. Why? Because coding starts from the top to the bottom. When it reached main program, it found that function A is not declared. Function B is not declared. Actually, they are here. So what we should do is we have to declare them first. We have to copy the name, declare it here, declare function B, and then declare function C. What is function C? Sorry, calculate. Function C is calculate. So you have to tell the main program that there are actually three functions, extra functions in this program. They are these functions. So where are they? You find it yourself. Uh, after the main program, it will go and find it out. All right. So when we compile and run, you will find that actually, um... okay, there are errors. So we have to check uh, about the code. Okay, this part is okay, just fine. Okay, this one is in calculator, in void. Double, double check about the declarations. Oh, okay, here is the integer. All right, save again, compile and run again. K 
okay it should work all right so i hope uh, throughout this exercise throughout this series of videos that you will learn about you have learned about how to define the functions how to declare the functions and then um, how to pass a parameter in a function how to um, return the value to the main program or return the main uh, return the value to other functions also possible how to update the values via references parameter or passing and then um, you should have comments on all of the functions you have so that you know um, what are these functions about at least um, when sometimes when you refer back to the programs you will know that oh okay this is this this function is this is the purpose okay all right thank you very much everyone thank you for watching this video